Testing, testing. Okay, welcome to the recording. Here's the problem we're going to be looking at today. Um, the number of potholes in any given one mile stretch of freeway pavement in Pennsylvania has a normal distribution. This distribution has a mean of 57, so 57 potholes on average, and a standard deviation of 8. Using the empirical rule, what is the approximate percentage of one mile long roadways with potholes numbering between 49 and 81. All right, so to get started here, first let's notice um, that they're asking us to use the empirical rule, which as uh, the Moore textbook refers to it, the 68%, 95%, 99.7% percent rule. So the first thing I want you to keep in mind is we're not going to be using our calculator or the normal CDF or inverse norm commands to find an answer here. The calculator would give us a more exact answer, but the empirical rule gives us tools for estimating that answer uh, in a way that has a little more intuition behind it or that we could do even if we didn't have a calculator. So WAMAP is going to be looking for the answer that the empirical rule gives you, even though that answer is approximate as compared to the exact answer you could get on the calculator. All right, so let's um, start our drawing and show some work here and see how we can calculate this. So here's our whiteboard. In a moment, we'll have it. All right, there's our whiteboard. And we want to start out by writing the given information. So they told us, let's get a, choose a good color here. Let's get, start writing our given information. So they told us the distribution was normal with mean 57, so on average 57 potholes, and standard deviation 8. And now let's make a sketch of that normal curve. Let's make it pretty big because we're going to have a lot of things to fill in as we deal with it here. So there's that horizontal axis. And now we'll take my time, try to draw a nice looking curve here. Well, there we go. Okay. Yours might look better, but that's not too bad. And let's go ahead and fill in our mean. Our mean center of that distribution is 57. Oop, that's a, not a great looking 5, 57. And now, I don't always like to fill in the values of um, the standard deviations when I'm drawing my normal curve because it's not always needed. But in this case, for an empirical distribution question, it's going to be very helpful. So let's go out one standard deviation above the mean. So that's going to be at that inflection point. If your inflection point is easier to locate if you've drawn a better drawing, let's say about there. This is going to be 57 plus 8, so that's going to be the number 65. If we go out another standard deviation, that should be equal distance. You're going to kind of approximate somewhere out here, and that's going to be 65 plus 8, which would be 73. And I'm going to have to draw my curve going out even farther in order to fill in my third standard distribution. You know that curve just goes on and on forever, always getting closer, closer, closer to the horizontal axis, but never reaching it. So if I go out one more standard deviation, 73 plus 8 is going to be 81. That would be out here. Let me just show the work for how I got that, at least this first one, this 65, right? I went from my mean of 57 and I added 8 to it because 8 was the standard deviation. And let's do the same thing to the right. We find that standard deviation. Now we're one standard deviation below the mean, so we're going to do 57 minus 8, which gets me to 49. And you could fill in more, but it turns out to answer this problem, we won't have to. So I'll just draw my curve going out a little bit further, but I won't fill in those numbers because I'm not going to end up needing them to solve my problem. But if it helps you to think about it, you can feel free to calculate out those numbers and fill them in. Oh, should be equal distance, so let's make that a little bit further out, right? Because standard deviation is always 8. doesn't want me to erase that. Okay. Standard deviation is always 8, so each of these should be the same distance. So it's really going to be somewhere closer to out here. All right, so now let's look at what the question asks us. It asks for the percentage or the proportion um, of values or streets that have between 49 and 81 potholes. So there's, here's our first critical or value of interest, 49. And there's our second value of interest, 81. 
And our job here is to figure out the area under the curve between those two values. So normally I could shade it all in and calculate it. I'm going to avoid shading here for just a moment because I don't want to make it too hard to see what we've already drawn. The thing I want to notice here is 81 is three standard deviations above the mean. And 49 is one standard deviation below the mean. So now I want to think about what the empirical rule tells me. When I think about that empirical rule, the 68% is the first number in the empirical rule that tells me 68% of the area under the curve is within one standard deviation of the mean. So 68% of the area is between 49 and 65. Well, that's not all the area I need, but it's a helpful way to start thinking about it. Actually, to get my final answer here, I'm going to do it in two parts. I'm going to kind of divide my picture in two. And first, I'm going to find this area. I'm going to find this area between 49 and 57. 49 is one standard deviation below the mean. So if I went all the way from 49 to 65, that would be 68% of the area. But I'm only going half that way. So this area here is going to be 1 half of 68%. So 1 half times 68. So this area here is 34% of the total area. So we've got part of our area filled in. Now let's use a different color and calculate the other area we need to finish this problem. Now we need to find the area from 57 all the way up to 81. So I'm going to color that in in green. And say notice, if I were going all the way to three standard deviations on that side, I could use the empirical rule to say it's 99.7% of the total area, because we're going out three standard deviations in both directions. But here we only want to go three standard deviations above, so we're only using half that area. So this area in green is going to be 1 half times 99.7, which if we do that out, gives us the decimal number, or the number 49.85. So this area in green is 49.85% of the area under the curve. The area in red is 34% of the area under the curve. So to find the total area, so for my final answer here, I can take that 34 plus the 49.85 to get a final answer which comes out to be 83.85. So the shaded area we've shown would be 83.85 percent. Oh, that should be an 8.85 percent of the area under the curve. So let's go back to our wall map and see how we would want to enter that there. So they say, do not enter the percent symbol, but they want to know the approximate percentage. So we can keep it as a percent. We don't have to turn it into a decimal. We can write 83.85. They already got the percent symbol for us there, and there it is, 83.85. And it looks like on this question, if you round it up to 83.9, you would still get full credit. All right, I hope that was helpful.